Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez, and today I'm doing another episode of my Building the Shot series, which if you don't know, is a series that I recently started where I describe the step-by-step -step process on how I came to a final image that I'm gonna be highlighting in every single episode. I show you every single photo that was taken that builds up to that final image, and I explain as much as I can about every step of that process as well. I've actually already made two other episodes of this series, so if you guys are interested in checking those out, you can do so by checking the description area below. I'll leave links to them there and even clicking in the top right corner of the screen here, right there. So you guys can check the videos out there as well. This series is actually gonna be video versions of text-based tutorials that I've already made or shared on either my Instagram at fjhphoto, in case you guys are curious about that, or in my Facebook lighting group called Learn to Light and Off-Camera Flash Lighting Community. The reason why I share them there first is because they're text-based and it just takes a little bit longer to make these video versions like I'm doing right now. So if you guys are interested in seeing those text-based versions first, definitely follow me on my Instagram, which is again, FJH Photo, and also my Facebook lighting group called Learn to Light and Off-Camera Flash Lighting Community. But enough about that, let's go ahead and talk about today's video, which is gonna be on this image on the screen right here of my friend and model Marina, who if you guys saw the last episode, you would recognize because it's the same girl, it's Marina. I took this picture last year in San Antonio at the historic Pearl, and if you guys live in San Antonio, you definitely need to check that place out because it's a beautiful, beautiful place and it's completely free to shoot at as well. Uh, the two times that I've shot there, actually more than two times that I've shot there, nobody told me anything, no security or anything because it's, again, it's free and you can shoot there with off camera flash, no problem. If you guys are interested in the gear that we use for this shot, I can tell you it was the A7R2, I believe, with the 85G Master. I'll leave links to every single thing that was used in this shot in the description area below, so definitely check that out if you're interested. So in this first shot, you can obviously tell that I did use off-camera flash, which is actually a good exposure. I was lucky enough to get a uh, good exposure and not an underexposed uh, level of off-camera flash or overexposed level of off-camera flash. But what I would always recommend to you guys, and I still recommend to you guys, is what you should do first is get that exposure on the background the way that you want it first, and then add off-camera flash. What I did in this shot is because I did add flash first, I don't have a good example for you guys to show you guys exactly how the level of light was on her without that off-camera flash. But if you guys take a look at the shadows underneath the chin and maybe a little bit underneath the arm, you can see just exactly how dark it would be on her skin and on that area of clothing on her arm um, had I not used off-camera flash. So if you guys want some sort of indication of how dark it was, you can definitely check, check out the shadows, which will show you exactly how dark it was. But again, you should always expose for that background first before adding flash. So what I did in this shot was I exposed for that background first, didn't take a shot to show you guys how it looked like without the flash, and then I just added flash, and I, I got a good shot. I got lucky with TTL. TTL is something that I definitely don't recommend you use unless you absolutely need to because man shooting manually is going to be the best thing for consistency. TTL is basically a little bit of an auto mode, and it can sometimes it will get a good shot, sometimes it won't. So if you can shoot manually, go ahead and do that because it's going to be the best thing for consistency. By now, you guys are probably wondering, well, why did you use TTL if you're so against it? Well, the, it's not so much that I'm opposed to TTL. I just think manual is going to be the best thing for that consistency so that you can get the same exposure of flash every single shot and not a guesstimated kind of level of flash. So manual is going to be the best thing for that consistency. The only reason why I shot with TTL for this shot is because on manual, the lowest output of my light, which is 128th, is actually too strong for the settings that I chose here. For the settings that I chose, which is f1.4, 150th of a second at ISO 3200th, that ambient is really being brought out. So even that little bit of flash at 128th of power is just way too strong. But one workaround that not a lot of people know about is when you shoot with TTL, you're actually capable of going lower than the lowest output available on manual. I'm definitely not the best at explaining this, but my understanding of TTL is basically it starts off by doing a little bit of a pre-flash, so it flashes, you know, it goes out like that, and then it reflects off of whatever you're, you're taking a picture of, for example, Marina here, and it bounces that light back into the light, and from that reading of how, you know, how much distance there is between the subject and the flash, it'll determine how much light to output which could be a good guess or it can be a bad guess. Because there's that little bit of a pre-flash at the very start of the whole shot taken with TTL, you, you basically lower that amount that the light's able of starting with. So basically what I mean is the lowest output is gonna be 128th on manual, which let's, let's say for example is this much. 
Well, with TTL, you have that preflash, which let's say, for example, 128th is right here. Well, that preflash is going to be reducing that level a little bit further, and then it's going to go ahead and do that little bit of reflection, and then it has that, you know, it has less to start from, so you're going to have lower outputs available to you than you if you were shooting with manual. I know that's not the best explanation there is on that, but that's the best way that I can explain it to you guys. So in this shot here, you can tell that because it's night, I wanted that ambient to really be brought out, which is why I chose the settings of ISO 3200, 1 50th of a second at f1.4, but I actually would use the f1.4 regardless if it was night or not, but it just helped a lot in night because at f1.4, you're, you're letting a lot of light in into that lens. So that's gonna help in getting that shadow depth of field as well as help bringing that light into the lens. Some of you guys out there were asking, well, why didn't you just reduce the ISO, increase the shutter speed and increase the flash output? Well, that would give me good exposure of Marina but it'd be sacrificing that, that background the way that I would want it. I wanted a lot of good ambient light there, so that's why I chose those settings. Um, although they're not the most ideal, I was shooting with the A7R2 and that gave me a clean image. So I was happy enough with this image the way that it was presented and I was happy with the level of ambient light as well. So I was pretty good with those settings. Actually, I thought I was good with those settings, but I ended up changing them just a little bit, which is why you see this different exposure in this shot here. You can see the background is just a little bit darker and that's because I went from a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second to 1 100th of a second, just one stop darker. The reason why I did that is because I felt like the background was just a little bit too bright, especially in the highlights, which was taking away attention from Marina. So I just adjusted the shutter from 1 50th to 1 100th and it kind of just gave me a better exposure for that background which wasn't stealing the attention from Marina. The reason why the flash was good is because again, I was shooting in TTL and TTL is basically in auto mode and it did a pretty good job at getting the exposure right on this shot. But again, TTL is gonna be inconsistent so it might be a little bit too bright, it might be a little bit too dark, but it did a good job in this shot here. Now in this next very, very bright and overexposed shot, you can see that Marina is definitely way too bright. The reason why that is is because I added one Godox 8200 or known as the Evolve 200 camera left and a little bit behind her because I wanted a little bit of separation between Marina and that background because without that secondary light source, I felt like Marina was just blending into that background a little too much. The reason why it's too bright is because I was using that light a little bit close and at the lowest output, which is 1 128th power, which is way too bright for the level that I needed. So again, if you remember that tip that I just shared with you guys, the next thing that I do in this next shot is I put that light into TTL mode, which would cut it down quite a bit. But I also, just to be safe, I increased a little bit of distance between the light and Marina. So that that's gonna effectively make the light lower because of the inverse square law, which if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically when the light's further away, it's gonna be a little bit less intense. So I wanted that less intense source of light because this shot is way too bright. In this next shot, you can see that I took off that secondary light source because I was like, you know, that shot is way too bright. Let me see if I do like these shadows a little bit more before I go ahead and maybe adjust that secondary light source. And what I found is that I do actually do like this shot a lot, but again, I was really wanting that separation. So I took this shot as it is, again, at the same settings of f1.4, uh, 1 100th of a second, ISO 3200. And I actually did like this shot, but again, I felt like she was just blending into that background a little too much. So in the next shot, I do add that secondary light source and you'll see exactly how that looks like right now. So in this shot, you can see that again, I did turn on that light once more and it isn't too bright now because I adjusted the output to be not 1 1 28th, but instead TTL minus three, which is the lowest that you can go to. So that did give me a good exposure on Marina, but I just felt like the light was too even. I wanted more shadows and more depth. So I felt like this was too even. But again, if you feel like this is the shot, this shot is good and this is something that you would aim for, then definitely go ahead and just keep that light somewhat close to camera axis, which is where you're gonna be, and that'll give you this even lighting. But if you're like me and you want those shadows and you want that depth, take that light and put it towards the back of the subject. In this case, I put it towards the back of Marina, and that gave a little bit of light towards the side of her, which carved the side of her body and created that little bit of separation that I was aiming for between her and the background. What helped me give a visual of how the light was gonna fall is that secondary light source, that Godox 8200, it does have a modeling lamp, which is why in the behind the scenes video for this, for this photo shoot and this shot, you can see that the light is on. So I was seeing exactly how that light was gonna fall. But again, I took this shot, felt like it was too even, and then I moved it. 
and then that gave me that the next shot that I'm about to show you. Now at this shot here, I felt like everything was exactly how I wanted it to be. And I had the background exposed exactly how I wanted it. She came out exposed fine in terms of the rim light and in terms of the main light being exactly where I needed to be, which is at TTL minus two at the main light and TTL minus three at the rim light. So everything was fine here. The light is exactly how I want it. Her expression's awesome. Her pose is awesome. So all those, you know, check marks, you know, everything I needed and wanted was, you know, exactly where I needed to be. So I went ahead and just edited this shot. When it comes to the edit, it was very, very minimal. All I did really was just a little bit of color toning, re reduced the blemishes, added a little bit of frequency separation, and went ahead and just liquefied her arm to be a little bit small. I realize now, after saying all that, it does seem complicated, but this edit was maybe around 15 minutes, which is honestly not a lot of time when it comes to retouching, but that's exactly what I did. Some of you guys out there were asking, well, why did I liquefy her arm? You know, wouldn't she not want that? When it comes to the models that I take photos of or the clients that I take photos of, literally every single one of them have always joked, you know, maybe you can take off a couple of pounds or something like that. But honestly, when it comes to me and my ethics, when it comes to liquefying or making something smaller than it is, I try and keep in mind that the camera is adding 10 pounds. Like that's an actual thing. And it, sometimes depending on the lens that you use, you'll make the subject a little bit bigger or you make them a little bit smaller than they normally are. So that's what I felt like in this case, I felt like her arm looked a little bit too big. So I went ahead and just made it smaller. And by also making it smaller, I felt like the shadows were also aligning more at a more pleasant curve in my opinion. So in that last shot, I felt like the, the shadow was a little bit out on her arm, was going a little bit out and then going back in. In this liquefied shot, you can see it's more of a, a nice, uh, nice, smoother curve. So that's why I felt totally comfortable editing the shot as is. But again, you, you should definitely always check with the clients or models that you're going to be photographing to see exactly how they feel about editing. And so you don't, you know, do anything that they might not want. All right. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You guys did ask me to do a speed light version of this video series, which is exactly what I did today. I use a speed light as a main light, but that Godox 8200 is actually not a speed light. But like I mentioned before, that light was a little bit too bright and it would actually be a lot better if I had used a speed light. So keep that in mind. If you don't have um, a Godox 8200 and you have only speed lights, that's actually really good for low light scenarios because I tend to use them at low light outputs uh, anyway. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will be making more of these tutorials because a lot of you guys seem to like them and I will, I will be taking requests, requests in case you guys want to see something different than what you've already seen in the past two videos or in this video. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave the video a like, subscribe if you aren't already subscribed and comment with your thoughts on how I can improve in the next uh, video in this series. All right, take care guys and I'll see you in the next one.